And um, yes, let us let us begin with a word of prayer as those uh, start coming in. Let's pray. Gracious and kind God, we thank you for your amazing grace towards us. We thank you, Father, that you know everything about us and you know what we need in the moments that we need them the most. Man. I thank you for this band of believers that are seeking after you, that are calling after you. I thank you that they haven't stopped calling and haven't stopped seeking. God, it's difficult sometimes as we are in these fleshly bodies seeking after you and trying to hear your voice. And sometimes it feels yeah. as though we are distant from you and we can't hear your voice and can't hear you. But encourage us in the moments where we are seeking solitude in you. Encourage yeah. us in the moments where our faith fails and we want to give in and we want to give up. But God, encourage our spirits tonight to keep pushing and keep pressing because at the end of that journey, we will find the treasure in your voice. Yes. So yes. tonight, God, I thank you for those who are on tonight and those who are watching. Tonight, I feel in my spirit, God, that there are so many people who struggle with solitude and the discipline of solitude, but more significantly struggle with pursuing after you. And Sarah, there may be, Father, someone who tried to pursue after you, God, but is getting discouraged in the pursuit. And I pray, Father, tonight that you would use us as we study together and talk together and pray together, you would use us to create liberation and freedom for all of us and help us, God, to continue to press after you. God, I thank you for your freedom in your spirit. I thank you for what you give to us and I thank you for how you have set us free and you keep setting us free. Mm -hmm. Because God, you told us who the son sets free is free indeed. And so Lord, thank you for the freedom in your spirit. And I thank you, God, that you continually talk to us. We don't deserve to hear your voice, but you still talk to us. Mm -hmm. so, Lord, I thank you for that. Bless now our conversation. Bless now these moments that we have to engage each other, but let your spirit do the talking and let your spirit do the teaching. And Lord, we will give you praise and we'll give you glory. Oh, yes. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 So I want to share um, a unique experience that happened to me today as I was preparing for this lesson. But before I share that, I want to pose a question as we began last week with the question, and I'm going to begin this, this week the same. Uh, and the question is, um, what are the difficulties that or challenges that you find in pursuing after God and pursuing after God's voice? What are some of the challenges? And I want to cap in kind of frame this in the idea of solitude, right? We talk, we're going to talk about the dark night of the soul and what it means to go through that process and pursue after God. I want you all to talk to me about some of the challenges you may have experienced, are experiencing um, in the pursuit of solitude. What are the challenges in the pursuit of solitude that you have experienced, currently are experiencing, um, or uh, you think are some of the challenges? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open that up for some discussion and then uh, we'll dive in. That's hmm. some of the challenges that you all experience. Some would suggest that some challenges is the fact that um, you pursue after God's voice and you don't hear. So I'm gonna, okay, all right, great. Let's go with Miss um, Janie, if you unmute yourself and then we will have some open discussions. Okay. 
One of my problems is staying focused in a long meditation and praying at the same time. You know, you like, there's no distractions, but it's like I get distracted. Um, that's my, one of my concerns. That's a great point, staying focused, because you can have all quietness in your room or in your home and still get distracted. Um, uh, Richard Foster identifies these, these distractions as voices in our, that we are saying in our head, you know, our own selves. We get distracted by the, our own things that we're thinking about. So that's a great point, staying focused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other challenges um, in pursuing in solitude? Oh, I don't have a problem staying focused. My 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 situation is: is it you, God? Mm. Is it you? And and he he. He let you, the word that you said last week is God is always there saying it to me. I got you. You my child. Mm -hmm. That that is one of the and it's it's so in the since I've been alone. It's one of the most the most joyful period in my thinking in my time I'm a lot and I start to talk to him or I ask him for something or something he said I got you mm. and that's the most comforting thing it's the most delightful thing mm -hmm. for God to tell me at two o'clock in the morning or 1 30 in the morning say, I got you Mm -hmm. You're my child. And that's how I got over. By mm -hmm. God telling me, you my child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he and I talk. We talk. And I say, if I start screaming, the people going to think next door going to think I'm, something is wrong. But I <laughs> feel like screaming. Yes. Because yes. he said, so, so my encounter, my, it, it's so positive. Mine's is positive. It helped me through mm -hmm. the period where I am. Because that's where I was reading the silence and solitude. They, they like go together. So I, in my solitude, God talks to me and he lifts me up above where I am. Mm. I don't have no, no real challenge. He lifts me up. Mm. That, that, that's a point, um, Miss Bertha. You made a point and before when you first started about this the which voice to hear, uh, discerning mm. the true voice. Right. And and I think that that's something that so many of us wrestle with. I got to yeah. hear you. But is that you? Um, and and is, is that what you were really telling me? Discerning. And I don't, I don't know if that's what you meant, but discerning the voice of God or what voice is speaking to me. Uh, is that what you meant or was that something something different? No, that's what I meant. It's God talking to me. Yeah. It's God. I know God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Right. I know God. Right. right. How come you know him? Because I've been knowing him all of my born days. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. I've gotten away from him. Oh, yes. That, that, that is so. And, and I think or what we'll discuss even today is discerning when I'm praying. Is this God talking? Or is this my voice? You know, mm. and when I go into silent prayer or into silence and try to seek solitude, um, I have to be intentional to quiet my voice because when I get into quiet time, it could be me 
going in there just wanting to talk. And it could be my thoughts. It could be my desires. And how do I discern if this is God's voice or is it my voice? And is my voice overshadowing God's voice? And that and 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 the other in the other voices that we hear. So so I appreciate uh, that point in terms of discerning the voice of God. So we got staying focused, discerning the voice of God as a challenge. What other challenges uh, do we have? I can't see anything in the group chat. No one has put anything there yet. Challenges. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. But when there's silence, it, without without silence, there is no solitude, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. 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 Ms. Pam, did you want to share? Well, I'm I'm going over my notes. Those were those were good. I actually was going to say discernment before you started talking about it, because I actually had an experience just yesterday because I was, I've been praying about, about something and I get when I, and when I pray about this one particular thing, I just get real emotional about it. And yesterday I literally heard, trust me. And I knew it, it wasn't me. I, I knew then that it wasn't me. And it seemed like everything yesterday was going towards trust. Even my uh, daily word through my Bible app was about, was about trust. Um, something I was reading today was about trust. And so as I sat in, in complete quietness and in solitude, I really felt the connection that I was supposed to be getting because I don't think I was trusting. Mm. I think it was bothering me so much and that that was why it was bothering me because I wasn't trusting. I mean, I kept praying and praying, but at some point you got to stop, stop and trust, right? You got to, you got to let God, you got to stop and, and allow God to do it. And so that was a lesson for me. And when, when I was just kind of going through today's lesson and reading about solitude and I got real quiet. I just got real quiet and just sat and sat a little bit. It 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 scared me just a little bit, only because I had never heard it like that before. Uh. So it was it was a it was a good thing. So I'm trusting. Amen. Yes. yes. I'm, 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 Amen. I'm, I'm letting God, I'm standing back, and I'm just gonna trust. Amen. 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 Not getting away. Not getting yes. away. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I want to give um, some room uh, for others to share because I'm just over, overfilled and overjoyed uh, tonight. Um, so I'm gonna give one. If someone else wants to share, and then I'll I'll share mine. Um, but that that is absolutely amazing, uh, Miss pa Miss Pam, to uh, be in the space uh, mm -hmm. where God can. And so you can be in that space and you're saying, well, okay, well, God, did you say, trust me? And I'm trying to trust. And then clearly you can hear it. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Right. And now it's time for me mm -hmm. to activate that trust. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes God has to just give it to us as clear as day for us to be able to take it. Because if not, we'll be like, well, I don't know, maybe. Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's so powerful. And I and I looked at my affirmations as being like the scripture. It was yeah. trust. It had trust in it. Yes. I was yes. reading and it had trust. And I said, okay, well, the, yes. this has to be the affirmation. This is that that was truly what he was telling me to do. Yeah. So I really have to do this now. Amen. And, and it made me excited because it's like, okay, that was that has been the problem. Now you get out of the way and just allow allow God to do that because that's what he said he would do. Yeah. 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 
there, there he is for all of us, a wall uh, in terms of solitude that we have to break. And solitude is that wall where we have to keep pushing in order to kind of uh, get into the space where God wants us to be so God can clearly talk to us. And, and it's not easy. Um, there are a lot of people right now who are discouraged because they have not gotten beyond that wall. And I wanna stop and speak prophetic, prophetically to people who are going through that space right now, keep pushing. My wife and I were talking and we were talking about this whole idea of um, hitting that wall and you're, you're trying to hear from God and you're trying to pursue after God and, and you haven't heard anything and you're, you're depressed and you're down. And she has the acronym PUSH a pray until something happens, mm. right? Just keep going, just keep pushing mm -hmm. and eventually mm -hmm. you get there. Uh, today, I was sitting at the, um, the medical school, Case Western Medical School, and I was preparing my PowerPoint slides and notes for tonight. And I got to um, a place where my computer, my computer uh, is, is an Apple computer. And sometimes you, it, it gets overloaded and, uh, I have it up too long and uh, it starts making this loud noise and I, and I don't pay attention to it. I just, I don't turn, I'm supposed to turn the computer off and reset it and turn it back on, but I just always shut the screen and always pull it back up. And this today, today it, it got, it got messed up where it just shut off and I'm trying to write my notes and the computer just went blank and God said it went blank for a reason. I need you to get up go across the street to the church and I need you to do what you're trying to teach tonight, right? Mm -hmm. And so I get um, into the sanctuary and I'm, and I'm upstairs in the balcony and I am kneeling down in prayer and nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm praying and I'm trying to talk to God and I'm trying to talk to God and I don't hear anything, you know, uh, even Jesse would tell you, Jesse comes into the sanctuary and he's working on some wires and he's working on trying to get the live stream ready for Saturday's funeral distractions. Like you, you mentioned, um, Miss Janie, distractions everywhere. And I'm praying. And then eventually I just fall asleep. I'm asleep on, on the bench and I wake up and I'm disappointed because nothing happened. And I said, God, I'm trying to do what I'm reading and I, and I need you to speak to me. And I felt so disconnected and I felt so discouraged that I had not got to that place. And so I go down to the, to the floor of the sanctuary and the Lord says, just sit on the front bench. Mm -hmm. And I sit on the front bench and I start being silent and I'm quiet. I stopped talking and I just quiet my voice. I don't say anything. I'm just in a meditative state where I ask God, please quiet my thoughts mm -hmm. because I am coming to you telling you what I need. And I said, God, I just need to quiet because I'm not getting any, get anywhere. Lord, just mm -hmm. quiet my thoughts. And I'm sitting there and he has me from that bench to lay prostrate in front of the altar. Hmm. and, and uh, Jesse is working and uh, noise from outside is, is, is so loud and God says just lay before me and, 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 and I'm going to quiet your thoughts and stop trying to think, stop trying to bring things to me, just let me speak to you and it, I, I tell you, you know, tell you, literally tell you when I'm sitting, I'm laying on the floor and I feel myself entering into that space. Mm. And I'm entering into this space and, I, and I'm crying before the Lord and God is just speaking and God is just speaking and God is just speaking. And God revealed to me that you came to me with what Richard Foster calls the sacrifice of fools. Mm. You came to me telling me things. Mm. You came to me talking to me and what you were saying to me was coming from an area of your flesh. It was coming from an area of you. You were telling me things that you were desiring and 
you were thinking. It didn't come from scripture. It didn't come from you meditating on my word. It came from what you were thinking. And literally I came to prayer talking to God about what I was thinking. But Richard Foster argues that solitude will never happen if you enter silence with the idea that I've come to just be silent and mm -hmm. not come to listen, right? And the sacrifice of fools is a really great, <clears throat> great section because it speaks to what I bring to prayer, mm -hmm. right? It speaks to what I bring to prayer. What do I bring to prayer? If I come to prayer or meditation with my own desires or what I want to talk to God about, I will never break through that uh, kind of wall um, because I'm bringing something that uh, is, is, is maybe not what the spirit is trying to say. And, and it doesn't get me to the place that I need to hear from God. I want to read um, the scripture that um, he gives to us in Ecclesiastes chapter five. Yes. Yes. One. yes. And this is the, this is, this is the issue of why it's so hard for us to break that wall. Mm -hmm. um, Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse one says, guard your steps. Mm -hmm. When you go to the house of God, Go near to what? Listen. Yes. Rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools mm -hmm. who do not know what they do wrong. Mm -hmm. Do not be quick with your mouth. Mm -hmm. do, do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just, I, and, and, and my prayer time today was mm -hmm. not this exhilarating. Um, I'm in the presence of God and God is just revealing great revelation. But my prayer time was more of that Isaiah, uh, woe, be, woe of me, right? I'm a man, a person of unclean lips. I feel so convicted uh, that prayer has been me bringing me my desires, right? And I know scripture teaches us that we can come before the Lord and we can bring our, our requests before the Lord and we can bring our, our ask before the Lord. And, and, and I believe that's true. But when I need to get into solitude where my main priority is to hear from God. I cannot come to this place with what we call, what he identified as a sacrifice of fools. And the mm -hmm. sacrifice of fools is broken down as, and it starts with this idea of me coming thinking I have the answer or me coming with my own request. And me being so hasty to talk and not being ready to uh, listen. And um, Matthew chapter 17, and I think that you definitely read this um, in uh, the book, but read this story. Um, maybe someone wants to go to Matthew chapter 17, then we can have some discussion around um, what I just shared. But Matthew chapter 17, uh, verses, I believe it starts with verse one to go verse six. Uh, anybody want to read that story? Matthew chapter 17, verses one through four. And after six days, Jesus taken Peter, that's where you want to go, yep. mm -hmm. Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good. Is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us make here 
three tabernacles, one for thee, the one for Moses, and one for Elijah. How far you want me to go? I think that's I think that, that's verse yeah, four, that right? Should, that should be it, right? That's it. That's it yes. right there. So mm -hmm. where where does and what does Richard Foster mm -hmm. says? Where does he go wrong? Where does Peter go wrong here? Peter. Well, I will make three. I will make the three shelters. Peter said to them, if you will, I will make here the shelters. And no one was speaking to Peter. He was speaking out of turn. There he was speaking is. out of turn. <clears throat> so on, and, and this is under the section of uh, the sacrifice of foods. Uh, it, mine is page 124 but it's the second page in uh, under sacrifice of fools about the third paragraph. It says, when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain and was transfigured before them, Moses, Moses, Moses Elijah appeared, carried on a conversation with Jesus. The Greek text goes on to say, and answering, Peter said to them, if you will, I will make here three shelters. Mm -hmm. That is so telling. No mm -hmm. one was even speaking to Peter. Mm -hmm. He was offering the sacrifice of fools. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? That mm -hmm. Peter is invited to a place of transfiguration with Christ, Moses, and Elijah. I mean, the, the fact that and, and that's what Richard Foster is really getting at is that solitude is an invitation that God invites you to a close space and intimate space with him to hear him talk to you. It's actually a privilege to be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. yes. It's a privilege to be in the space where God is. And that's why, you know, scripture teaches us that in the presence of God is the fullness of joy and at his right hands are pleasures evermore. It is a privilege to be in God's presence. And mm -hmm. the fact that Jesus invites Peter, James, and John up is a privilege amid the rest of the disciples. Mm -hmm. And so scripture says that Jesus is in conversation with Moses and Elijah, and then Peter answers, right? So that word in the Greek answers simply means that he was answering like, Someone had asked him a question, right. right? How do you bring an answer to a situation <laughs> where no one asks you any question, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh, my wife and I were at the theater at the um, Caramu house at the end of a, a, a play, and we were talking to someone and someone asked us a question and this other person just came up mm -hmm. <laughs> and just answered the question, right? We didn't know who she was. She just walked up and answered the question. And that's the same thing that Peter does here. But from a, and I know that's kind of jovial and, and kind of seemed crazy, but essentially that's what we do in prayer. That if we understand the idea of prayer, prayer mm -hmm. is, I don't know what to ask God for, mm -hmm. right? We learn mm -hmm. that in, in the epistles. I don't know what to ask God for. And so the spirit has to do what? Intercede on my behalf. Right. The right. spirit has to tell God what we really need because we'll be asking God for things that we know we don't need and we mm -hmm. do it all the time. And mm -hmm. so literally the picture is you get before the Lord and you're answering him. This is what I want. And this is what I need. And it causes disruption and disappointment with God because God says, you don't know what you need. Mm -hmm. And literally we mismanage the moments of prayer by wasting time that God is trying to speak, but we're too busy trying to answer, mm. which is the sacrifice of fools. And what was, what was amazing to me in Revelation this morning was most times the foolish conversation that we bring to prayer comes as a result of when I have been fasting or feasting rather on foolishness instead mm -hmm. of feasting on his word. 
-hmm. Because when I'm coming to God, I'm actually supposed to give him God and God loves for us to give back him back his word. Right. Mm -hmm. You said to me that you would um, uh, see about every need that I have. You said that you would do these things. That's that's his word. But if I haven't been feasting on his word, if I've been feasting on foolishness, guess what? I'm going to go to God about foolishness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to God and say, God, these people have just been getting on my nerves and I need you to do something about them. That's foolishness. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, Lord, help me and give me what I need to be able to make it through this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That literally prayer is an offering to God. And we don't see that as, but if you, if you read and look at the Ark of the Covenant, the incense of in the ark, uh, not the ark, in, incense in, in the tabernacle uh, was what you send up in terms of your supplication to God. Prayer is an offering to God. It's a sacrifice to God. And I guess the question that we must ask ourselves is in prayer, are we offering the sacrifice of fools? Mm. Or are we offering the sacrifice uh, of the spirit of, of what God desires for us to ask? And um, I'm, I'm curious about conversation around that, that point there. Um, if anybody wants to give feedback on that, but that, that, it just, that just caused me to think deeply about how I spend my time in prayer and how I prepare for my, my time in prayer. Um, that the, that's why it's so essential when we talk about the inward disciplines, prayer, fasting, study, meditation, it's not a la carte. You can't just choose prayer and not choose fasting. Mm. You can't choose prayer and not choose meditation. Mm. You can't just choose meditation and not choose study. Mm -hmm. All of them go hand in hand because if I do more praying and I don't do any fasting, then my prayer life is going to be ineffective because fasting is supposed to quiet my desires. It's supposed to quiet the noise around me. It's supposed mm -hmm. to quiet the distractions around me. It's supposed to quiet my desires. But if I have my desires and still go to God in prayer, guess what? Guess what's going to influence my prayer life? My mm -hmm. desires. Mm -hmm. If I don't study and meditate, if I go months without reading his word, mm -hmm. what, kind of prayer li what kind of prayer life are you going to have? Nothing. You're going to be offering sacrifices and food. And many of us do this. Many of us go literally weeks without reading his word. Mm. We do. I mean, it, it happens. All of us do it. I mean, from a, whether weeks or days, you know, but if I'm going to talk to God daily, I cannot afford to not spend time in his word because I don't Amen. know what to talk to God Amen. about. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why Psalm 1 says what? I meditate on his word day and night. And I, if I don't meditate on his word, I, I can't be a tree planted by the rivers of water that can't be moved. I can be easily be moved because I don't have the discerning spirit of the Holy Spirit working in, in, in through me. He can't, the Holy Spirit can't take control of me. The Holy Spirit can't consume me because guess what? There's no footing that the Holy Spirit has. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to God, yes, it's so easy to offer the sacrifice of fools when I'm not rooted in him. And I just thought that was just so uh, amazing because I'm more like Peter days than I'm not like Peter and mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in how he answers. And so silence and solitude, as Ms. Bertha said, Richard Foster argues are inseparable but the key to silence is listening. Mm -hmm. But if I go in to listen, I must, what he argues, I must control my mouth mm -hmm. and I must quiet my mouth. And he, he spends uh, three or four pages talking about the control of the tongue, mm -hmm. the control of what I'm offering to God. And it's, and it's, it's no coincidence that he goes from the control of your tongue to then the sacrifice of the fools. Mm. And he talks about tongue. And many of us think about the, the James talking about the tongue is fire and, you know, uh, taming the tongue in terms of how we talk to each other. 
But this is not about how we talk to each other. This is about how we talk to God. Yes. Right. Yes. So we're we're not even talking about how I cuss my brothers and sisters out, or I yes. get mad at them, or how I don't talk to them, and, right. and how I. This is literally about how I talk to God. Solitude is about how I'm communicating with God, and if I am going to enter into silence, I must control what I say. And yeah. the reality is, I can't, because Scripture teaches us. James says it's uncontrollable by human efforts. You can't control your tongue. That's why those inward disciplines are so important. Fasting, prayer, meditation, study. Those are the things that help me control my inward self so that I can come to God and I'm able to be able to hear from him, um, but then also not allow the distractions around me to cause me not to hear. Uh, anyone wants to share? I like how he gives us these whiz, these nuggets of wisdom as he teaches us what the discipline is. And yeah. then he'll give yeah. us a statement and it'll, it, it'll be full of wisdom. And on that same uh, thread that you were talking about, uh, and I'm looking under solitude and silence, I like it when he says the purpose of silence and solitude is to be able to see and hear. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, he, and he says, under the discipline of silence and solitude, we learn to speak and when to refrain mm. from speaking. Mm. And if we're staying in, in and if, if, if we're allowing ourselves to connect to him in, sil in solitude, then we can be quiet when we need to be quiet because he will speak that to us for a, and, and we'll be able to know that that's what we need to do. I thought that was awesome. That, that's, that's such a huge point, uh, Ms. Pam, because Th this discipline is identified as the out as an outward discipline, right? That mm -hmm. it's something that happens inward that is supposed to be demonstrated outward. And if I can learn the lesson on when to speak and not to speak in prayer, imagine what that means for me when I'm in my everyday life, mm. right? And someone says something to me that just annoys me and aggravates me. If I can do that in private with God, then imagine what type of manifestation that he'll give me when I'm in public, right? And so uh, that's why that's why that discipline uh, of 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 controlling and maiming and taming that tongue is so important in the private as as well in the public. So that's that's an amazing great point. Great point. So control is the key. Control is the key. Mm -hmm. Control mm -hmm. is the key. Is the key. That's what Ecclesiastes said. Mm. The wise preacher of Ecclesiastes said that there is a time to keep silent mm -hmm. and a time to speak. That's yeah. right. Control is the key. Mm. That's what yeah. Mr. Foster, that's what Dr. Foster is saying. And, <laughs> and, and the biggest piece, Miss Bertha, is many of us can master this uh, in the regular world or our everyday life but struggle to master this in private prayer. When is it time to speak? Yes. And when is it time to be quiet? Yeah. And, 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 and if, we, if we evaluate it, and I, I thought about this this morning, if I took time evaluating and analyzing uh, my prayer life with God, percentage wise, how much time do I talk to him? How much time do I listen to him? Do you listen? Uh, I, 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 I probably would have, of course, more percentage of me talking and not enough because we're not used. And this is the practice and we'll deal with some of the practices that he get practical things that he gives us in order in terms of steps to solitude. Mm -hmm. He literally says that we must practice just being quiet. Yeah. And yeah. not saying anything. Yeah. And when I tell you that's some, that's one of the most difficult things I tell you from my perspective is one of the most difficult things for me because I'm used to talking and I'm used to engaging and having conversation. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But a conversation is not a conversation if it's just a monologue. And if I am just talking the entire time, that's not a conversation. And I never give time for God to speak. I just say, Lord, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me my daily bread, our Father, how, whatever I'm saying to God, and I get up and I just walk away. And I say, yeah. Lord, do it for me. I need you to help me. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And I get up, walk away, and that's prayer for me. If that's prayer for us, then we have a very unbalanced prayer life with God. And, and God is, is so filled with so much to tell us mm -hmm. and can't get it out because we don't give God enough time to get it out. We out of control then, Pastor? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. We're out of control. That's, that's a great point. So um, Richard Foster goes from the silence and solitude mm -hmm. to the sacrifice of fools mm -hmm. to one of the most beautiful sections in terms of uh, the dark night of the soul. Mm. And, and this dark night of the soul is interesting because what he says is that the dark night of the soul is the way God brings us into hush a stillness yeah. so that he may work an inner transformation upon the soul. Uh, mm -hmm. Earlier this year or last year, we talked, we did a sermon series around God work on us and make us better and how God puts us on his, um, you know, operating table and he goes inside of us and he, you know, shifts and makes us new. And even David says, Lord created me a new heart, a new, new a heart right? And make within me a clean spirit or renew within me a clean, a clean spirit. And this is the place God does it, where he finally gets us to just be quiet and not be quiet in terms of our vocal, you know, how we talk, but quiet our mind. So you can get in silence and your mind's still running and you're still thinking um, I'm in prayer right now. And if I'm, I'm in prayer, I'm thinking about, uh, what we going to eat. And, and, and this is something that always happens. Like you can get in silence and you can get in prayer time and all of the stuff that you didn't think about now starts coming to your head. Right. <laughs> I, this morning I was in prayer and, um, I quieted my mouth and I didn't talk. And I started thinking about all of the emails I didn't send. And all of the things that were supposed to be on my schedule and what was supposed to be happening tomorrow and where is this person and where is that? My mind is now running. Mm. My mouth is closed, but my mind is now running. But in this dark night of the soul, God wants us to bring, he wants to bring us to a place of complete hush because like he can't work on us until he can shut us up. Mm -hmm. and he can shut us down. And I think about this morning and how my computer just shut down. Mm -hmm. And God was saying to me, Cash, I need to shut you down. Mm -hmm. And sh complete shutdown means complete shutdown. Uh, when God does what God does to Adam, making Eve, what did he have to do? Put, Eve, put Adam in a deep sleep. Mm -hmm. I wonder, wonder what that had been like. If I mean, God could literally could have operated on Adam and and Adam had no pain during the operation. That's how God could be, you know, but, but God had shut him completely down. I can imagine all the questions Adam would have been asking God, but sometimes you, God needs to do the same thing to us in order to operate on us, but we have to be willing. God is not going to do that, you know, unless something, you know, bad happens where he just automatically shuts you down and your body just shuts down, but your mind still is rolling. And we have to be willing to come to the place where God, I am willing to shut myself down. And sometimes I get in prayer and I'm saying, God, quiet my thoughts, mm -hmm. quiet what's around me, quiet my inner thoughts, quiet the distractions. And right. the, the power of this discipline, and I want, to, I want you to hear this, the power of this discipline is that if you can learn this discipline inwardly, privately, 
you can be anywhere where distractions are and still be in the place to hear God. I, I, it was amazing for me this morning for everything to be going on around and God was still speaking and I could hear God. That is the place that we want to get to. And it, it requires us to be daily seekers. Mm-hmm. That, that just like I have the desire to get up and eat, just like I have the desire to get up and, and, and go to church or wherever I want to go, I have to have that same desire to be seeking to be in that place. Mm-hmm. And now the, the caveat about the dark night of the soul is that the dark night, the seeking the dark night of the soul can be disappointing. Because you can go after God and no, and not hear anything from God. Mm-hmm. You can pray and pray and pray and fail because I, God, I ain't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Right. But the reality is, just like we said earlier, you got to keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Pray until something happens. Keep right. on going. Don't stop. Because the moment you stop was the moment that you were about to get in the breakthrough and about to get to that place that he wanted. Right. And I, I think that's one of the enemy's largest tools for you to almost get there. And the enemy influences you. Mm. Ain't nothing happening. Nothing happening. Mm. You might as well stop. And Richard Foster mm. talks about this, that we have to get to this freedom where we're not concerned what people think or what we think. We have to get to that freedom to say, I'm going to keep going until mm-hmm. I experience. I, I got to be I'm going to be like Jacob. I will not let you go until you bless me. Yes, yes. I will not let you go until I get in, in, in my time with you. I am not going to let this prayer go. And I tell you, I had the experience where this morning I said, I just can't stop. <laughs> I need to encounter God. Mm-hmm. And we have to have that desire daily. Whatever is going on, God, I am seeking and I am coming after you and I need to experience you and I need to feel you and I need to encounter you and whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Shut me down. I'm going to encounter you and I'm going to feel you. And it's not easy. It's difficult. It is. It is difficult. It's not easy. And it gets discouraging, but I want you to, I want to encourage you, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. So um, Dark Knight of the Soul, anybody else want to talk about Dark Knight of the Soul until we get into um, the practical steps to enter solitude? And then this will be the end. And I want to end tonight in prayer. So I want uh, Miss um, uh, Brenda Bowie to get ready. Um, and I'm going to call on somebody else and we're going to, we're going to go to God in prayer and we're going to intercede on the behalf of those who are, are, have been praying and have gotten discouraged. And we're going to intercede tonight on those seeking solitude, uh, but haven't found out how to quiet and shut down. We're going to intercede. So Ms. Brenda, get ready. And uh, we, we're going to go to God um, as prayer warriors tonight. Because the, what the enemy does not want and does not need is for us to figure out how to break through that wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's what the enemy can't afford. Yeah. And uh, because too much liberation will happen in our family, too much freedom will happen in our lives when we learn to break through the wall. And even when we don't break through the wall, we don't get discouraged. We say, devil, I'm not going to stop. I'm right. going to keep pushing. I'm right. going to keep crying. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to keep asking. I'm oh, going to man. keep on going. I'm going to be like that widow woman who kept bugging that, 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 That's that right. judge, right? And I'm going to keep asking. And, and the Lord says to us, if this widow woman can get this from an unjust judge, what can you think you can get from your father in heaven? Mm. Oh. Right? What do you think you can get from your father in heaven with a widow woman persistently going after an unjust judge who don't have justice in his body or his bones? If an unjust judge can give the widow, give this, this woman what she needs, imagine what God can give us if we just keep on going and keep on pressing.
Paul said, God had given me a thorn in my flesh. And I prayed three times and I kept on praying, right? Until he finally answered me. And I finally got into that dark night of the soul place. And he said, my grace is sufficient. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane kept on praying. And what happened? He kept on praying until he got the answer. God mm -hmm. says, not my will, but but, but I will be done. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got to keep going. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop. Somebody else want to finish off with Dark Night of the Soul. Um, and if, if you want any more comments on that. You, you were mentioning, uh, you know, part of it is frustration. Yes, it is. It's it's. Um, and when you have your routines in your life and you're thinking like, OK, like you said, your mind gets busy. Um, I got to do this. I got to do that. OK, when I get home, I got to do this. But then yet I'm trying to pray. But then I'm like, oh, no, wait a minute. The clock is ticking. I know it's probably so and so time. And and then you're like, OK, I keep asking, asking, asking. And I can't stay down here too much longer. So all these thoughts do pop in your head. And you're right. And trying to to get the, the thoughts because it's nothing but the devil that's getting in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's uh, it, it, get, it does it does get frustrating and difficult. Um, but you're right. Once it's mastered, there's nothing's going to take. Nothing can take over, but God. That's right. That's right. Anybody else? Okay, I, I'm gonna give you these practical steps that Foster gives to us in terms of um, um, steps into solitude, uh, really breaking through that wall. And these are practical things that we can do um, uh, yearly, monthly, weekly um, that he shares to us. He, in the study guide, it asks for the five practical steps. And so you can put this answer under there. So the I first one, with seven. did you have seven? I, I did. I know he said five in his yes. question, but when I was going through it, I came up with seven. So I'm going to see what you're going to tell let's us. Do, let's do this. And because I love that because I had others and I'm like, wait a minute. I have this. I have, I have some others too. So it's fine. This is good um, because he doesn't say one, two, three, four, five. Six. Right. He just talks. Right. And he's and, and the study guy says that there were five. So these are the five that I picked out. Okay. And um, Miss Pam, where I don't have you add. So he says, find small moments during the day to hear mm -hmm. his voice. That's one. Mm -hmm. Finding the small moments, creating those small moments within the car, just finding those moments. Mm -hmm. But then he says, create. Number two, create spaces around your home, car, mm -hmm. or life in general to hear his voice. So right. finding the small moments, but then creating the spaces, designated mm -hmm. spaces. And we talked about this last year, finding those God spaces, whatever it is, and designating them for that. Um, designating for that. Number three. Practice spending time not talking, but listening to his, 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 listening to hear his voice. So practice spending time not talking at all. And um, he even gives a greater challenge uh, and gives us a, a, a length of time not to talk. I can't remember what how he says. He said, go or what he said, whole day. Uh, without talking at all. Now that's that's yes. that's difficult. Yes. <laughs> that's yes. challenging. Yes. Uh, right. Now we know uh, several individuals who are in the monastic order. They spend days without talking. It's a mm. discipline, um, and and they go a little bit further than we do, and we can do because we actually live in the world. Uh, they the, the monastic monks actually decide to go outside of the world. Don't do anything. They separate themselves, um, but. Practice spending time not talking, but listening and set some parameters around that. Set time, number four, set time aside to set goals or goal setting. Set. Like goal setting. Set time aside to goal set. 
And that's in, uh, in, in that portion as well. So goal setting, setting some time aside, a retreat time, just get away and, and goals. And, and then he says, reevaluate your goals and, 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 and understand uh, that these are the goals that I have. My goal is I want to pray. Uh, I pray once a day now. I want to pray twice a day. It's a goal, mm -hmm. right? What, what are your goals? I want to meditate more. I've been doing well studying. And I've been doing well praying. Uh, I also want to incorporate more fasting this year in my life. And I want mm -hmm. God to direct me in fasting because we don't fast enough, right? There are people who fast all the time. Maybe all the time is too much for me, but at least I need to fast more than once a year, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's something that we could put as a goal, right? I want to meditate more. I do a lot of studying. I do a lot of investigating scripture. I do a lot of getting into the word, asking God, what is this, inter trying to interpret scripture. But I don't meditate enough on the scripture. I don't take the scripture and I don't say, God, this is, um, this is what, I, what you're saying to me. I don't meditate on it. Um, goal set. Uh, five. Mm -hmm. uh, is that five? Yeah, five. Be intentional once a year for retreat. Solely hear from God. So you got that, Ms. Ms. Pam? Mm -hmm. Okay, so retreat was the last one I had. So we have retreat. We have uh, we have. Let me go back through them again. Setting goal, goal setting, practice spending time not talking but listening to hear His voice. Creating spaces around your home, car, life in general to hear His voice, and find small moments during the day to hear His voice. So give me the two that you didn't that that I didn't have. And I'm gonna add that to my list. Okay. Well, I, I know you said the, the quiet place was finding the place around your home, but I picked up one that said, let's find places outside the home. Outside the home, right. It could be, it could be a park, it could be the church sanctuary, like you, Pastor, have opened yeah. up our, our sanctuary to on on Wednesdays, I think it is, to allow. Uh, some of the health workers to come in. And so for them, that could, that's like a place for them. Um, another one, our words are few and our words are few and full. Mm -hmm. Do what we say we will do. Mm maintain a plain speech if if you say you're going to do something then follow through and do it don't say you're going to do something and then you're not going to do it so do what you say you will do and and the reference is is, is ecclesiastes 5 5 it is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we got practical ways. I'm going to put this on the screen because uh, that's a big one, uh, Miss Pam. And uh, not all of us uh, are honest about that one. Uh, so let me try to put this on the screen. And, and what about listen to the thunder of God's silence? Mm -hmm. Keep a journal Keep a journal record of what comes to you. Keep a journal record of what comes to you. Okay, so we've got several of these. <laughs> okay. Richard gave us, Dr. Foster gave us uh, five. We got now eight. Um, and you add to these. This doesn't have to be it. Add to them. And so that's what we'll do. Uh, but I'm so excited about this solitude. And see how simplicity connects to solitude. Think, Keep thinking about that, too, because see how simplicity connects to solitude? Uh, and then now we're going to go into submission, which is a difficult one for all of us. Uh, so, But this is what I want to do. Uh, Ms. Bowie uh, is on the line. And we're going to go to God in prayer and intercede on the behalf of others. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to pray. 
So, uh, Ms. Bui, I'm going to ask that you unmute yourself. Yes, sir. And um, uh, let's, let's go to God in prayer. It, is there anyone on the line now? And I've heard some uh, who um, talk about the frustration, and we've, we've had two of those challenges. Is there anyone else that want to specify what they're asking God for? And uh, we're going to go to God in prayer about that tonight. Okay. All right, Ms. Bowie. Most holy, righteous, supreme sovereign, Lord God, we want to pause for a moment. We come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice we hear falling on our ear, the son of God discloses. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet that the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gives to us within our hearts keeps ringing. Mm -hmm. I stay in the garden with him. Yes. yes, God. Though the night around me is falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling. Yes. Lord, we're so glad that you walk with us. You talk with us. And you tell us that we are your own. Giving us the opportunity to have the joy that we share together with you as we tarry. We can't describe it, Lord. We can't obtain it. We ask that you continue to give us the moments to be in solitude with you. Find the moments. Create the space. Listen, Lord, to hear your voice. Yes, God. And to concentrate on your voice. So no matter what is going on around us, Lord, we still hear you. In the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of people having anxiety over things, Lord, we still can hear your voice. Yes, God. Yes, God. We ask that you allow the bereaved families, Lord, that, that are with us and those that we don't even know to hear your voice. Yes, God. We thank you for hearing your voice Tonight, we are anticipating, Lord, before we go to bed tonight, yes, God. to hear your voice. Yes, God. It's so sweet. Mm. It is so sweet. Mm. We thank you, Lord God, for the privilege of studying your word. for the direction that pastor is taking us in understanding the importance to hear your voice. Yes, God. There's no other voice like your voice. Mm. We praise you, Lord. We lift you up. We magnify your holy name. Yes, God. Continue, Lord, to give us experiences, Lord, as the experience that Pastor shared with us tonight, mm -hmm. going into the temple, Lord, wherever you have us, Lord, we want to hear your voice. Help us to be silent. Mm -hmm. Let all the earth be silent before him. Mm -hmm. 
in the stillness, yes, God. the quietness. It's sweet. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Yes, God. And we praise you. Mm. As we continue to listen for your voice. Mm. Some of us have heard it. <laughs> Some of us are hearing it right now. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God, we count it as done. And there may be challenges to come, but we seal that prayer that Ms. Bowie prayed tonight in your name. And we know, God, that you can do all things. Walk with us. Remind us of your presence. And we are assured that your voice would speak, that we would quiet ourselves to hear you, Encourage the hearts of your saints tonight who are in pursuit of you. Our ultimate desire is to be close to you. Our ultimate desire is to hear from you, touch you, smell you, feel you, experience you. And so, Lord, tonight as we rest, let us feel your presence. Let us encounter you in new ways that you may reassure us that everything is well and we okay. You've got everything in your hands. You're providing for us as you've always done. You're taking care of us as you've always done. It is well with our soul because you've got everything worked out. Thank you. Hallelujah. God, chains are broken tonight because we know we have freedom in you. And so, Lord, thank you for your love and your kindness towards us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. God be praised. God be praised. Um, amen. Enter into the silence of tonight and experience God in new ways. Yeah. He'll bless you. Have a wonderful night. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Have a wonderful night. Pastor. Yes. Question. You know, the analogy that he used, I think it was on the tongue, when he said, when a champion go out and he's practicing. Yeah. Yes. We didn't elaborate. And he's practicing and he can get the hoop. He can, shoot, right. he can get the basket. But when it comes to competition, he can't get it. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. He talked mm -hmm. about that. That's right. That's he, right. As, he, as, a, as a champion can make the mark and, and, and do it in clutch moments, God desires to give us that same power and that same efficiency in prayer. That when it's time to be quiet and it's time to listen, God will give you that same efficiency. Um, and that's, that's our prayer. Amen. That's our prayer. All right. Have a wonderful night. Y'all be blessed.